Welcome ladies and gentlemen. I'm the series strategy game and we're returning to our Fridays for Future Let's Play or Fate of the World, the climate change game. So, I'm very very happy because for the very much in the first time in history we are bringing down emissions very significantly for the last two decades or so and very significantly in the last turn. Especially since after we've done some early successes with North America, with Europe, you can see these uh, things coming down a little bit, but even now uh, that at the same time it was taken up by the growth of India, the very slow decline in the emissions of China, and all of these things are now coming into place a little bit better. India is coming into place, Southern Africa is coming into place a little bit better, so that's very nice. On the other hand, we are also seeing that the global gas production peaks, and I'm not sure why that is, because if we do have a look over here on the gas sector, we can see there was a, a kink here in, in, the, DV, in, in the production. Uh, I think this might have been a little bit artificial. I think this is, this is a natural decline over here uh, in usage rather than production. So, especially since uh, production is falling in the Middle East and in Russia at the same time, uh, I think this is, this is probably a little bit artificial, so we don't need to, cons to be concerned too, too much with that. Right, uh, let's have a look at the world. Everything is hopefully very stable or stable. Yeah, so that's looking good. In terms of food supply, we are suffering some issues in North America and Japan, so that's all right. But the annual emissions, of course, are still high. Look at the India actually in the third place. I'm very, very happy about that. But yeah, the other big news from last time is that North America did discover something very very important and that is super smart grids. Super smart grids do reduce energy usage in all sectors, uh, less residential energy, energy usage on top of that and renewables growth potential is max so that is is very very nice to see. And the implementation of semi-intelligent intelligent super smart grids is increasing an energy economy in North America. We've also got a couple of other things in, in particular we are reforesting a little bit so that's very nice to see. Everything else seems to be doing fairly well, uh, fairly good as well, including our switch to electric transport. So we should see that if we do look at the electricity sector over here, yeah, we are now reusing all uh, all renewable energies, even though uh, we've been shifting towards uh, electric cars. So that is extremely nice to see and a very, very good effect of the super smart grids. Right, um, where are emissions coming from in North America? Just look at that, the emissions are tiny. They used to be so immense and now they, they used to be 8,000 or so and now they are down to just a couple of hundred. Um, and that is extremely nice. Especially that the forest uh, for deforestation has been halted and uh, forestry is actually pro providing a negative input to this now. Uh, we are suffering a little bit from resource extraction. So that is something that we might want to look at, but honestly Emissions are so low over here uh, that I'm fairly happy with this uh, as is. We don't need to commit to renewables because we have 100% renewables already. People do love us, so this might actually be a very good place to put uh, down the turbine tax. We also, have we adapted to... No, yeah, we have adapted to everything. Yeah, the uh, food stuff is a bit of a problem and that is, a co uh, is caused by us deploying these sulfur aerosols, uh, but I don't think there's much that we can do in that regard, so yeah. yeah. Let's actually go towards the biggest polluters then, which are producing still thousands of tons of CO2 emissions, and that is mostly in the energy sector in South Africa, and I think that's because we are expanding solar and, and renewable energy here slightly, but it's coming into place very, very slowly, so we're still burning quite a bit of coal over here and actually oil and all of that, so that is a problem. That being said, oh, there's some draw chance. That needs to be considered. Everything else seems to be fine though. Can we actually do something against rot except for adaptation? No, we cannot. And I don't like to play adaptation because it's not a long-term solution. Right, so that being said, I think the most important thing here is to get these super smart grids uh, so that we can increase our renewable share a little bit faster. We could buy this now or we could wait two turns. So the difference is one turn and I'm not sure it's worthwhile to buy this actually. Um, we might as well though. So let's acquire these super smart grids. Tensile materials is going to wait for a little while. But yeah, other, other than that, you should be fine. Let's look at India. Similar situation, we could buy the super smart grids, which I think would be fairly good. 
How, how are things over here? All in all, you dislike the water stress. Sunshine quantum computing is nice. Lots of sickness due to toxicity in our fuel mix. That is because we're burning quite a couple of things, especially coal and oil and gas and all of that, basically. So that is something that we do need to keep in mind. We are using a lot of uranium over here, but is it actually increasing? Yeah, it seems to be increasing a little bit, and that means that we are requiring much less technology. Which is nice, but not critical. So let's acquire these super smart grids, and I think that's going to be fine. Water stress, there's not much we can do about this. I think what we could do long term is try to get the high yield crops. But I'm more worried about these super smart grids, to be honest. And then next turn we might actually... You know what, let's switch out of committing to nuclear and actually switch back to, or not back, but actually for, for the first time to switch to committing to renewables because I think it would be nice to replace the uh, usage of, of uranium, which is limited of course, uh, with this. Um, there is only so much uranium to go around in the world, so yeah, we can't, we can't rely on this all the time. Yeah, Middle East seems to be doing fine as well. Uh, only good news over here. Potentially except for the emissions, which are coming from the energy sector mostly. And a little bit from the transport sector as well. Yeah, everything else is, is really tiny though. So in terms of technology, super smart grids might make some sense. Everything else to me seems to seems to be decent technology though. So yeah, let's actually acquire super smart grids and you know what, let's actually come into renewables over here as well. And I think that should be alright. Right, who who is next in line? So we've got Southern Africa, the Middle East, that leaves us with South Asia, China and Latin America. So let's go for these. South Asia, how are things over here? Advanced turbines, nice. Multiple wildfires, that's no good. What do do yep, that's fine. Okay. So similar situation. We are spreading the technology all over the place, but here we do need to get the photovoltaic cells and the super smart grid still. So until we have these, I really don't think it does make any sense to to commit to uh, nuclear, so sorry, not nuclear, to renewable energy. Um, could go for the super tensile materials as well. Not sure that it has a high priority. So we might actually want to play the protecting of the land and soil, especially since I think you are still suffering from some deforestation down here, yeah. It's actually one of the worst regions that we currently have. North America is reforesting, as is India, but Southeast Asia really isn't yet. Right, China then. Heading in the right direction, everything seems to be doing well. Except for the fire, of course. And you're reforesting, so that's all very nice. Advanced turbines, super smart grid's gonna come into play very soon. I mean, you still are suffering from quite a bit of emissions. And again, it's mostly agricultural. I'm having a very hard time... Hard time fighting that. We could acquire high crop yields. Which would give us more performance and less water usage. But that's not necessarily an agricultural help. Is it? Do we actually have third generation biofuels? We do not, but we will have next turn. Just how are we looking in terms of oil production, specifically or, um, specifically synthetic oil? Well, we are producing about a thousand units. I think in Southeast Asia we expanded that for quite a while. But China does have a very nice basis to do this, so I think that's actually something that we do want to look at. So expand biofuels and at the same time acquire high yield crop stains. I think these are this might be a very good combination of things. And we need to keep an eye on this, but it should uh, overall be, it should be all right. Right, that being said, we could increase the efficiency of, oh yeah, still have affordable down here. We should skip that, hmm. So we can't convert our nuclear power plants anymore. 
could acquire the super smart grids. It's only one turn, but you know what? I think it's going to be fine. Let's do this. Okay. Fairly happy with this result, so yeah, that should be alright. Who was next in line? After China, not on the forestry, but on the actual emissions. Latin America, Northern Africa. Yeah, these are these are weirdly similar regions that uh, in terms of emissions. So yeah, you also got a lot of technology. Technology is saving the day over here pretty much. Yeah, so that's nice to see. What are your missions actually coming from? Transport. Yeah, we do need to keep an eye on transport as well. So we might actually want to do some. Can we not do transport improvements? Funny, we cannot. I, I thought we would have been for sure able to do this. Coal free industry is something that I do want to see. All of the other things are nice, but not really required. Super smart grids. Yeah, let's actually commit to super smart grids. And then I think we can go for committing to renewables. Just so that we get rid of the energy sector completely. I mean, you're at 67% renewables already, which is fairly nice. But it's mostly because we're bringing down energy efficiency and we will require more uh, technology, uh, sorry, more power soon as we will get out of um, fossil fuel burning for, for transport in particular. Yep, all of these are very good news for Northern Africa. Only good news in Northern Africa. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? So, here again, I think it's a similar story. Acquire photovoltaic cells, acquire super smart grids. And then next turn, we will be able to do a lot of good things. Photovoltaic, super smart grids. All of this is fairly expensive. But we do have some funds over here, so... I'm fairly happy with this. Right. Yeah, the same actually with Russia. Everything so far so good. We're doing some transport efficiency down here. Is that actually a smart move? In terms of emissions, very little is coming from transport. Yeah, we might switch out of that completely. In terms of electricity, some renewables. They only started to come into play last turn, so that's nice to see. And yeah, but we would require at least the turbines and the super smart grids, I think. So yeah, super smart grids, turbines, oop. Yeah, I think we can afford this. So let's do it, and I think that's fine. Right, that pretty much only leaves Japan, where nothing ever really happens because it's such a small emitter uh, of anything, really. Coal is no longer used. Uh, can, uh, the, there are some risks of storms, so we might as well go for this. And in Oceania, Everything seems to be fine and dandy, so that's nice. No real need to do anything super funky over here. We could acquire quantum computing, but we're going to get it next turn anyway. So there's no immediate need for that. We weren't warned of any impending doom, so we don't need, really need to do it. You're a materialist. We could bring you down to at least neutral or so. Yeah, so let's actually do some eco awareness campaign down here. That should be okay. Right, we've been we've been uh, going through this fairly quickly. So uh, let's actually see whether there are any further slots that we could buy. Only in Japan and Oceania, which is kind of weird actually. So are we turbine taxing anyone? If we are, then of course we could withdraw this simply because we do have the money anyway. So there's no need to do any of that. Acquire benthic depressurization. No, I'm not convinced. Super smart goods we are acquiring anyway. We are expanding biofuels here anyway. We are protecting the land and soil anyway, so... Hura harvest? Drought? Any reforestation? No, 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 no. No problems here with drought or anything like that. So let's decline coal power. I don't think there's there's a lot of coal power still in the mix. 
Yeah, very, very little actually. Ah, come on. This is a stupid, stupid call to play just for the sake of it. Have we done electric cars? Yeah, I think we did. Could do late retirement. Could do more eco awareness, but I don't think that's that's okay. Let's do transport efficiency in China instead. I think that's a good choice. Turbine taxing North America. Yeah, I think that does still make sense, even if we don't have anything to do over there other than that. Or well, specifically because we don't have to do anything else. Yeah, other than that, we seem to be fine. So we might as well buy another card in Oceania. Protect the land and soil over here. And similarly in Japan. Well, in Japan we don't really have the money to do this. Do we want to switch out any of our technologies? I think not. Right. So we do have some money left over in the bank, but it's not as drastic. So I would actually like to do two turns this time, if at all possible. Okay, temperatures are coming up again, as are the emissions. First generation nanotechnology breakthrough, that is very, 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 very good. And third generation biofuel breakthrough, so both of these are very good news in terms of technology. People do love us, so I'm, <laughs> I'm really feeling like we're having a high over here. This is probably the best that it has been in this game. And yeah, emissions are coming down even more drastically, even in the Middle East. Even in India further, even in South East Asia for the first time, so these are very, very good news. Uh, although, we are still forcing down uh, the climate over there very drastically. At some point we are going to struggle over here, uh, because at some point you might get into trouble commercially. Um, and it's very hard to say when there is that breakthrough, but if the commerce sector uh, does get too large, it, there, there is going to be some issue. Right, that being said, um, with all of these technologies, I think we should look at Europe first, because in Europe we have got the first generation nanotechnology breakthrough, and that will give rise to some very, very fun things over here, including Moonbase Alpha, Space Solar Collectors, Asteroid Mining, and I think that's it, but these are very, very, ooh, synthetic feedstocks as well. So these are very, very interesting. So the Moonbase Alpha does uh, set the generation or set the stage for second generation fusion control, but there is a chance of failure. Uh, space solar collectors do give an increase in solar capacity in all regions, which is very, very, very good. And then there's asteroid minings, all regions reserves, plus 20% hard coal. That's, that's not something that we do want. A little bit more water, all industry. This would be nice, but yeah, the space solar collectors, this is a very, very, very good technology, uh, which will allow us to do a lot of good things, specifically with solar uh, capacity and ultimately also uh, the Moonbase Alpha. Are there any other news that we do need to be aware of? Deforestation halted. That is nice to see. That's sunshine, that is a little bit unfortunate. Storm and flood mitigation is not something that we really need. Vegetarian program is as useful as possible. Okay, so yeah, that was probably this single card that we did play. But we don't really need the adaptation to floods. We are not being warned of any any floods. So yeah, I think this is good. Uh, let's also check all of the other new technologies that we've got. So yeah, synthetic feedstocks. They are also amazing. They uh, sw would switch Europe to synthetic pesticides, fertilizers and plastic, and that means agriculture industry no longer need oil and gas, uh, but they would require a lot more energy equivalent uh, by doing this. So you do need some energy, but we are producing some, some renewable stuff, so that's nice to see. Artificial biomes are nice because that does uh, prevent extinctions, and that of course is something that we would like to see, but we would have to play it in, uh, infinitely, so we need an entire card slot for that. And then we've got this, artificial trees. I love artificial trees. Direct mass construction of carbon absorbing installations in Europe. These will greatly mitigate anthropogenic emissions. So this would be great because these guys would suck emissions from out of the air and, and thereby actually might even push us into the negatives. So artificial trees, definitely an amazing thing. 
Uh, we could also acquire s a third generation biofields, but uh, for now I don't think that's something that Europe did specialize on in any meaningful capacity, so we're gonna go for the artificial trees over here, and that should be okay. Right, we are going for second generation nanotechnology. It's gonna take some time in Europe, unfortunately. In North America, yeah, probably, probably the same, unfortunately. Yeah, but nevertheless, technology seems to be fine over here. And that is a great breakthrough. Where are we standing in terms of electricity? We're pretty much only using renewables, which is pretty fantastic. So yeah, you can see Europe is now using enormous amount of renewables. We could actually switch out of the committing to renewables, I think. Although, where are emissions coming from then? Most industry and agriculture, yeah. So you are using a little bit of oil and all of that, but yeah, but I think just playing the synthetic livestock might be a little bit too early because five times energy equivalent, that's a lot. On the other hand, the space solar collectors are so great. Okay, let's switch over here. And then we can see, observe the effect next time around. Right. What are actually the biggest emitters? Let's check Middle East is actually our front. Middle East, India and South Asia. So sort of these three. Let's check on the Middle East whether everything is okay. Deforestation is slowing. Nice. Nationalism is rising. That's a little bit of cause of concern. Not too much actually. There's water stress. There are some storms being announced. And we have two cards available. So that's nice to see. I think first generation nanotechnology is something that we do want to acquire certainly. So it would be good to acquire uh, super tensile materials. We are committing to renewables already. Uh, can we see the effect in in terms of our power usage? 23% renewables. I don't think we had any last turn. Basically none last turn. A lot more this turn. So gas and oil usage are coming down very significantly. So that's extremely nice. So yeah, let's acquire super tensile materials. I think that was yeah on the way over here. Nice. What else shall we do? Could switch over to electric cars, but I think that might be a little bit too early. So, we are deploying sulfur aerosols, but we are materialist still. I think it might make sense to start the conversion uh, to at least a balanced outlook over here. And we've got India. How are things over here? Climate refugees. Ooh, that's no good. Industrial emissions, water stress. Water stress, of course, always a big issue. But yeah, super smart grids are in play. And are we committing to renewables? We are. So this is actually going to be very interesting to see just how much energy is being shifted out of uranium into new sources, especially solar. Yeah, well, I mean, they're shifting mostly between the two, but we're also reducing our gas usage. So that's fairly fantastic. I think this is good. Not much we can do about the water stress. But we could certainly think about getting for the first generation nanotechnology. So start to start to somewhat more aggressively go to into the advanced drilling front and acquire that. All of the other things I think are fine, especially the biochar. Would seem to make sense to us. Although the high yield crops, you know what? Let's actually try to get the second generation biofuels and then go into the high yield crops because they do require less uh, and less energy as well right southeast asia how are you doing my friends down here you're mostly using or producing emissions from the energy and transport sector actually so that's interesting to see all good news so we don't need to be aware of any impending doom and likewise here i think the first generation biotech would be great but also the third generation biofuels because South Asia is actually one of the areas where we are producing an, a very significant amount of biofuels. Is this coming down actually? I thought we had a higher, we were at a higher point. Yeah, why is that then? Is there anything that did reduce our agriculture? I don't see anything. Well, Acquire the third generation biofuels still 
would make a lot of sense as would be acquiring the super tensile materials committing to renewables is something that is also very interesting okay let's switch out of the land and put pro land protection act there for a second and actually go to the committing to renewables i think this is going to be fairly fantastic with the photovoltaic cells and the turbines that should give our electricity at least some some pause here and bring up renewable technology much more aggressively right a little bit faster this time of course we didn't because we do have the second turn here so southern africa actually going very down and china and latin america so southern africa i think our incentive here for renewable energy is really starting to pay off yeah you can see just how quickly this is expanding and that's fantastic to see because you're hardly using any coal anymore that's that's really nice to see emissions reduction is extremely nice economic bounds is co is eco-friendly Ooh, so southern africa is now considered developed and it's switching its uh its place in the cap and trade emissions which we might um, reconsider at some point in the very near future so coal free industry would i think be very fantastic and likewise here first generation nanotechnology is a high priority so let's actually make sure to acquire these super tensile materials and all of the other ones i think do still make sense and that will also incentivize the industry to switch out of coal usage is still using quite a lot of that so that's okay and fantastic actually china how are things energy ooh so we are facing some gas and uranium shortages that's not too bad we also reforesting we are also conducting some reforestation and that's nice to see so we can go directly into first generation nanotechnology and potentially third generation biotech although i realize our money is starting to run a little bit thin where are your emissions still coming from agriculture of course we know that resource production and forestry so these are negative that's nice to see yeah, and then we've got the energy production. You you are based on a uranium production skill. And we do have the uh, high yield crops now, so I actually want to check whether that did anything for us. So, firstly, we should check the agricultural GDP. Increasing, increasing very significantly. And the biofuels. It's about a thousand, that's nice to see. Uh, sorry, I did mean to go to synthetic fuels. Synthetics. How fast are you coming up? Fairly fast. But yeah, that's pretty good. Let's switch to conventional farming, I don't think that's what we require. We are requiring all relevant technology though, so let's actually commit to renewables. I think that's gonna be alright. I mean, you do have all of the technologies ready. So yeah, does make sense to me. Right, who else? In China, Latin America, Northern Africa. Okay, so these guys over there. Latin America, news over here are okay. Nothing to be too concerned about. We also got the super smart grids and all of the rest. We are committing to renewables. Is that paying, us? Is that paying off? Yes, 72% already. That's fantastic. There's a big, big bike in demand. I think that's potentially due to some effects of coal being no longer used in industry. Yeah, that's nice. And I think we can actually go for electric cars now. And that should also help out quite a lot. Super tensile materials, yes. Super tensile materials it is. High yield crops, uh, we don't really need that right now. So I think I'm content with this. What's the picnic crop reduce working week? No, 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 we don't want to do that. Acquire high yield crops. Might not be the worst. We have adaptation to everything over there. Could get a little bit more money from here. Also expand the use of biofuels. I mean, it's, it's an okay region for that. Not the best, but okay. A 
Okay, let's go for let's go for a little bit of biofuel because why not? And in Northern Africa, everything seems to be fine except for water stress. Deforestation is halted. That's nice to see. Yeah, and actually all of that is fairly good. And we do have everything ready. Yes, we do. So are we committing to renewables? We are not yet, but we might as well. How is the electricity going? You already have some renewables, even without us actively committing to that. So that's very good, actually. Does he cool? Does he cool? Come on, game. Ah, well. Either way, this is the right choice. Right, other than that though, coal-free industry would be fairly good, I think, but on the other hand, technology-wise, we of course need to get to nanotechnology, so let's try to get advanced drilling done. <coughs> we do have less and less money, so I'm not sure how much money we'll have for Russia. Although, again, only good news in Russia. I'm so happy. This is going so well for us. So we could get the first generation nanotechnology. Let's try to do that because I want to get the artificial trees and all of that. So that would be nice. Emissions over here seem to be fine actually. So we don't need to be too concerned about that. Renewables are fairly high as well already. So let's go for the coal free industry. I think that should be okay. North America. How close are you actually to getting nanotechnology? Not that close, and I definitely do want that over here. So let's acquire that Tobin tax. Yeah, now we need it. But yeah, people do love us over here, so I think that's fine. All of the other research is still going on fairly well. Might get fusion very soon, although I don't think we actually will need it, uh, curiously enough. And then we've got Japan. Well, there's no big effects in Japan. Storm and flood mitigation. We could drop out of this in favor of any any technology that we can acquire, including nanotech. So, yeah, nanotech is great. And super smart bits. But you know what? Nanotechnology is more important. And over here in Oceania, so that is lost. There's a drought risk. So let's get out of the eco awareness campaign. And ah, we don't have enough money. We just don't have enough money. That's unfortunate. Also, first generation nanotechnology might be nice. Can we? Yes, we can. Okay, so let's in Japan actually go ahead and play TurboTax. It does give us some room to do other things down here. So firstly, we're going to acquire nanotechnology here. And then in Japan, we do have enough money to buy another slot and acquire an technology now. So yeah, just taxing people and making sure everything is alright. Good, so... That does leave us in a very peculiar situation. Do we want to check on how things are standing in the year 2100? Let's advance to the next year just to see how things are. Okay, temperatures are coming up again. That's somewhat to be expected. Space Solar Array launches. Some desalination breakthrough in Japan, that's also good. Nothing too bad. Some increases in some of these things, but let's look at Europe. I do want to see it. Yes, emissions are negative. So that is due to the artificial trees, which we'll have to keep funding for a very long time. But our emissions are now... Okay, see, the graph does display that somewhat weirdly. Uh, but yeah, our emissions are now negative in... Europe and therefore globally somewhat lower than, than than before. Fantastic results over here. Although the drop hasn't been quite as significant over the last turn. But yeah, extremely happy about this result. And let's actually check on the uh, energy down here in South Africa. Because I want to see whether there's any benefit in the solar power. Yes, yeah, so the yellow bar has very, very drastically increased over here. And that I think is due to the fact that we've played the solar array in Europe. So extremely happy about that. Of course the energy usage uh, it went up, uh, but that is due to uh, carbon usage and all of that. Uh, so sorry, <laughs> coal usage in the industry being replaced. That being said, extremely good turn for us over here, and technology is progressing very, very rapidly. 
uh, and we do have some very very good effects over here including desalination which is also going to be uh, very important going forward that being said thank you very much for watching and i do look forward to see you guys next time around bye bye